This is Joseph Druss, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, is there a way I can edit topology created from ZRemesher using ZSphere? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have the anime head here loaded in. So the question is asking if there is a way that I can take a model, generate new topology for that model using ZRemesher, and then edit the topology that was created using ZSphere's. So the answer to that question is yes, this process can be done. So I'm just gonna go through the entire workflow here. So to start off, this mesh that I have is a DynaMesh model, so you can see the topology is pretty dense. And so I first want to just duplicate this mesh, so I can then create a ZRemeshed version of it. So I'm gonna navigate the tool palette here, open up the subtool area, and then I come down and click Duplicate, which is now gonna generate a new subtool. I'm going to make sure that the new subtool is the only one that is visible. So I'm going to hover over the eyeball icon here in the subtool palette. I'm going to hold the shift key and then click the eyeball icon, which will change the visibility across all the subtools. And now I should only see the visible subtool on my screen. So now that I have just this subtool selected, I can now run ZRemesher to generate new topology for this mesh. So I'm going to navigate down the tool palette here. I'm going to open up the geometry area. I'm going to open up the ZRemesher area. I'm going to set my target polygon count to somewhere around 1 and hit enter. This is going to generate around 1,000 polys here. And now I'm going to simply click ZRemesher. Now when you click ZRemesher, ZRemesher is going to look at the sculptural details on your mesh and then create new topology around those details. So after this process finishes here, you'll see this is the result I got. And if I turn on my polyframes, you can see this is the topology. So this is still a little bit too high, so I want to reduce it a little bit more. So I'm going to come back over here to the zero mesher panel. I'm going to activate the half option, which is going to look at the current poly count for the mesh. And now the next time you run zero mesher, it's going to attempt to give you half the resolution that was currently there. So I'm going to click zero mesher one more time. And now I'm getting something like this. So there's a little less resolution here. The ears still look good, but some areas around the nose, mouth, and eyes are not as defined as I'd like them to be. Now I could undo and then start sculpting some details on my mesh and allow ZRemesher to look at those sculptural details. But instead of doing that, I'm just going to take this mesh and just edit it using an appended ZSphere retopology. So before I append the ZSphere to the scene, I just want to first clone this mesh. So I come back up here to the subtool palette and open this up, make sure I have the ZRemesh version selected. And now I want to click the clone option that's up here in the top of the tool palette which is going to take this subtool and now create a new tool from it. So clicking this here, you'll see I now have a new tool up in the tool palette here. And by doing this, I'll be able to use the select topo option with the appended ZSphere. So now that I have this cloned out, and then go back to my original tool here with the two subtools, I can now append a ZSphere. So I'm gonna go to the append button and click this. Quick pick menu should open up here, and now I just wanna locate the ZSphere and click that. There should now be a ZSphere appended to the subtool list here. So I select that ZSphere. I'm going to also turn the visibility on for the DynaMesh version of the head. And then I'm going to activate transparency so I can see the ZSphere in relation to the DynaMesh version of the head. You'll notice the ZSphere is a little bit large, so I want to scale this down. So I'm going to hit X on my keyboard to activate symmetry. Then I'm going to navigate up to the top here and select the scale option. And then I'm just going to click and drag, and I just want to scale that ZSphere down to it's about that size. So something a little bit smaller, and that looks pretty good there. Now with the ZSphere selected and scaled down, I want to navigate all the way to the bottom of the tool palette here, and I will want to locate the topology area and open this up. And in here, there are a few options that allow you to create topology using this ZSphere. So before I click this Edit Topology button, I want to click this Select Topo button. And when I click this Select Topo button, it's going to open up that Quick Pick menu again, and in here, you should see that head that I created the clone of. So this is the ZRemesher head that I cloned into its own tool. And with this being its own tool, I can now select it. And when I select it, it's now going to use the geometry from the ZRemesher head as my starting topology for the ZSphere process. So if I click this here, you'll notice that my mesh should now look like this. And you'll see it's taken the topology from that model and now generated ZSphere topology out of it. So I can turn off transparency here and also deactivate the polyframes. I should now have this effect on my model. Now I can go to the topology area here and now select Edit Topology. 
And now I'll be able to go through and edit the topology that I had generated from the zero mesher process. Now, before you start editing the topology here, you want to make sure that you're in draw mode. So since I was scaling that original Z sphere there, I'm still in scale mode. So before I start editing this topology, you want to make sure you switch back to draw mode. Now that I'm in draw mode, I can zoom in on the model here. I can hold down spacebar to adjust my draw size. And now I can hover over any of the vertices on this topology and hold down alt and click. And that will allow me to remove that topology. So I can come through and start removing the topology around the areas of the eye here. Just holding down alt and clicking to just remove the topology that was generated with the zero mesher process. So something like that. And now I can go back in and generate new topology around this area. So to generate new topology, you first just want to establish a starting point. And to do this, you can hold down control and then click on a vertice, and that's going to put this little circle around it. So anywhere this circle exists is where the next point is gonna be attached to. So with this circle selected, if I click here, it's going to generate a line to the point that I just created. So wherever this circle is, is where the line will be generated for your topology. So with the circle being here, I can now click this point and it's gonna create new topology across that area. So circles there, it's gonna create from there. So you can just come through and start generating new topology in this fashion. So holding control and selecting a point if the circle is not in the right location, and then just clicking to create that new topology. So I'm gonna come around this part here and just generate topology around that eye area. Now, if you misclick or generate some topology you didn't like, you can always just hold Alt and click, and that will remove that point. And then you can go back in and start reestablishing that topology in that area. And just come through here and start generating the topology on the surface. So I just want to go through and just create some topology across this here that will better describe the eyebrow line here. And you can take as much time as you like doing this process. Topology is its own beast for sure. And I'm just going to quickly just generate some rough topology here. So it's not going to be too pretty, but it should still be functional. So something like this. So there we go. So we've got some of those eye cavities matching the topology a little bit better there. And we're going to do the same thing with the mouth. So I'm going to hold down Alt and just remove those points around the mouth area there, like so. Maybe around the chin as well. And then hold control to establish that new start point. And then just coming through and starting to generate new topology along the mouth line. And you can see after you get hang of this, this process goes pretty quick. So that looks pretty good there. Remove this point. So that looks pretty good there. So we've gone through, we've Z-remeshed the model. We've then cloned that model, create a new tool. We've then appended a Z-sphere to our existing tool. We then went down to the topology area here. We did a select topo and selected the cloned Z-remesh version of the model. Then we were made sure we were in edit mode and we clicked edit topology. And then we came through and started editing the topology on our mesh. Now, after you have your topology edited, we now just need to create this into an adaptive skin so we can append it back to our original scene. So we can go to the adaptive skin area here and we can activate the preview option. Now you'll notice by default, when you activate the preview option by clicking this button here or pressing A on your keyboard, that it's going to preview the mesh in a DynaMesh fashion. So if I turn on solo here, you can see this is the result I'm getting. So we want to disable the DynaMesh resolution here by just setting that down to zero. And then we also want to set our density down to one. And so now we should have this version of our topology here. Now, as you're previewing it in this fashion, you may notice some areas that may still need a little bit more love. So the area of the nose cavity here, and I really don't need this edge. So you can always go back and edit the topology. So I can get out of preview mode and get out of solo, and then go back down to the topology there. And now locate that area that was causing that issue. Hold down control and select that start point. Modify that there, and then maybe delete this one recreate that geometry there because I didn't want that triangle. 
Now I can go back to the adaptive skin and preview again and activate solo. And you can see now my topology looks like this. So now I can make an adaptive skin out of this by clicking make adaptive skin. This is going to generate a new tool at the top here. And this should have a skin underscore appended to it. So now I can select my original model, open up the subtool palette here. And now I can click append and select that Z sphere topology that I just created. And now I can change the visibility on that. And now I have my topology, which was started from using the Zero Mesher model, and then having that model edited using Z spheres. And so now at this stage, I can export this out as a low resolution version, or I could even divide this up and then project the details back from my high resolution model onto that mesh if I want to generate a normal map or a displacement map from inside a ZBrush. So I hope that helps. If you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.